Now I do want you to talk to us a little bit about your experience, just as much as you feel comfortable sharing. Okay. Um, so we can talk about like actual scenarios that this is, you know, where this has happened to us. So for me, it was a family member. Um, and I mean, I, I'm open now at 30, almost 40, 34 years old. Um, it was my mom's fiance and you know, as far back as I can remember, like living in this house, I'm like, I had to be three when mm -hmm. it started. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember, like I have vivid memories of different things that had happened mm -hmm. even at a young child, as a young child. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I don't remember like being in diapers. So I'm like, I had to be a little older than that, but I know it started before I started kindergarten mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the first couple of years, because this happened, you know, like say I say it started when I was three. Mm -hmm. My mom died of a heart attack when I was nine. And I remember one of the first things that went through my mind as a child was like, she's no longer here to protect me. Mm. Like this person's going to have free reign to do whatever they want mm. because nobody's here to protect me. Mm. Um, so and in, in, in deeper into the story, there was no protection. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm going to say it started when I was three. And it was, um, like I said, I, I remember vivid things. Like I remember people coming, you know, him coming into my room at night. And mm -hmm. as my mom had four kids, I was the only girl. So I was the only one with my own room. Mm -hmm. um, I remember like being taken downstairs to their room when she wasn't home. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, sitting at the table playing Monopoly. And then all of a sudden, like Charmaine had to go take a bath mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my brothers are like, you know, like, what's going on? But we're young. If I'm three, we're three, six, nine, twelve. Like, yeah. they're not um, thinking anything. Yeah. And I remember, like, as a child, like you said, just having to, like, have a wall up and protect myself. And I would be like, all right, if there's anything happening at school, like, I'm staying at school as long as I can mm -hmm. to not go home. Mm -hmm. And every weekend I'm like, can I spend a night at your house this weekend? Mm -hmm. Like, anything to not be home because my mom worked on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, did you tell your mom? I did not tell her. Mm -hmm. She came home from work one day mm -hmm. randomly and the door was locked and she's banging on the door and I get shoved into the closet mm -hmm. and he opens the door and is, you know, making it seem like I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And she opens the door and sees me. Mm -hmm. And I remember like us getting in the car and driving to her sister's house mm -hmm. and her telling my aunt, who, you know, at this point they both passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't remember because I'm in the other room, like what the conversation was. Mm -hmm. I remember him, her kicking him out mm -hmm. and us never really talking about it. And my aunt never really saying anything. And then one day she had to work and she needed a babysitter mm -hmm. and she drops us off at his house. Mm. And it's like me and my brothers in the same situation. So, you know, I remember her coming to pick us up. And as we're walking down the steps, I'm like, he did it again. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. And her storming back up there and bringing him down to apologize. Mm. And um, like I said, when she died, I'm like, who's going to protect me now? Mm -hmm. But as an adult, you weren't protecting me. Mm -hmm. I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. I would never. Yeah, it's not even a thing. Yeah. Never, never. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so, talk to me. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm a very strict parent, but like, I'm always going to advocate for you guys when it comes to school, when it comes to whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And I remember she died when I was nine. And I remember, um, you know, he apologized and she forgave him. She forgave him. It yeah. was never about what I thought or felt or, you know. And then I remember one of my brothers, like, started to realize something happened. And somebody came and knocked on the door one day. And it was, like, investigators. And, you know, they're like, we're here. We want to talk to you. And she... Let them come in. You can talk to her with me present. We sit down and they're across from me, but she's across from me as well. So they can't see her face. Mm -hmm. But her face is like, you know what you need to say. Mm -hmm. And as I sat there and lied, not one time did she stop me. Mm -hmm. Not one time did she step in. They never even should have had to talk to me because the moment that they knocked on the door, that was your opportunity to say what had happened, mm -hmm. which you knew, what you saw, mm -hmm. and you didn't. Mm -hmm. And I remember lying and them leaving. And I remember being taken to not necessarily the hospital, but somewhere mm -hmm. and speaking to someone and them just asking simple questions like, can you, you know, tell me what different body parts are? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I couldn't, I couldn't say penis. I couldn't say vagina. I couldn't say like, because I was traumatized and I didn't know it at the time. And I'm sure like in their um, profession, they realized that like, there's a reason why she's not saying these things. Mm -hmm. But again, without any proof, without me admitting it, without my mom saying anything, they had nothing to go on. Mm -hmm. And the day that she died, that man lived in our house. Mm -hmm. I remember my best friend at the time spending the night and somebody knocking on the door. We were sleeping in my brother's room and them thinking he was in there and like coming in and being like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and like walking away and me coming out and all these people are here. And I'm like, where's mom? Where's mom? And nobody's saying anything. Mm -hmm. And us going to the hospital and me still questioning what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for them to be like, you know, we went to go wake mom up today and she didn't wake up. Mm -hmm. And at nine, I had to process what that meant because they didn't say she died. Mm -hmm. It's like we're tiptoeing around this situation, but right. we're in this hospital. Right. Um, and I remember, you know, like once the dust had settled and I had a chance to collect myself, mm -hmm. like that was the first thing that came to mind. Like who, I just felt like her present was somewhat of a protection, mm -hmm. even though she physically didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the courts decided I was going to move with my dad mm -hmm. at the end of the school year. So mm -hmm. the summertime comes. And this man walked into my room and I, it wakes me up mm -hmm. and he's twisting the blinds to close them. Mm -mm. And I remember like for the first time in six years, me saying like, don't touch me. I will tell my dad, like me knowing I was moving with my dad was like but enough like for me to be like, I will tell him mm -hmm. and he will do something yeah. just like my hope that he would do something. Yeah. And of course he's like, no, I just came in here because I miss your mom you know, all of these things, and, and as gruesome as it sounds, like they had moved me into the room that she died in. I'm sleeping in the bed that she died in. Mm. And me being like, no, you need to leave. Mm -hmm. Like, I will tell my dad. Mm -hmm. And he did leave. But, you know, again, as a family member where it's like, I'll give you money. Um, we'll go to Disney. Just mm -hmm. like all of these little things that as a kid, like, don't tell anyone. This is our little secret. Like, I'm big on my kids. Like, we don't have I tell people in my family, I don't care if the secret is like, we're doing something special for mom. Mm -hmm. There are no secrets. Mm -hmm. That's not, a, I don't ever want them to think that it's okay to keep secrets. Mm -hmm. I don't care how innocent the secret is mm -hmm. because the moment that they think it's okay to keep a secret that is innocent, mm -hmm. then they'll keep other secrets. Mm -hmm. And I cannot like, you know, the mom that I am today, I'll go to jail for mine. Yeah. 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 A thousand percent. I will never know or be told or not trust my child because that's something that you see a lot too. Mm -hmm. They'll tell their parents and they didn't, I didn't have to tell her you walked in on it, mm -hmm. whatever denial you had mm -hmm. when your child was in the closet naked. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, you had to go to sleep at night with, mm -hmm. but I will never, ever, ever like allow my daughters to think that they can't come to me or that I'm not going to trust them or that I'm going to put a man before them. Yeah. 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 And you know, I ended up moving with my dad and I remember, like, just being, certain things would happen that would trigger me. Yeah. So, like, he would go to, like, give me a hug. And I'd be like, is this, like, is there different intent behind this? At nine years old, I know about intent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, are you doing nice things because you want something from me? Mm -hmm. um, and he was never like that. But, and I didn't know if he knew. Mm -hmm. I never knew if my mom told him. Mm -hmm. I do know that he was in jail one year. And I wrote him a letter. Like, I was so angry. All of these things that I've been through by the age of nine. Mm -hmm. And, like, you can't get it right to be a good dad. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing him a letter in jail, like, telling him about the entire assault mm -hmm. and everything that had transpired. And his girlfriend at the time, you know, had, had read the letter and was like, I'm not sending this to him. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't need this burden while he's in jail. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. So my whole life I've had a wall up and I've just felt like, like, I have to be independent because if nobody's going to take care of me and protect me, then I'm going to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And I question, like, are you protecting me? Like, or is this manipulation? Mm -hmm. Are you telling me what I want to hear, but, like, your intent isn't genuine? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, that's my, again, my aunt knew she didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And this sounds sad, but, like, when you lose a parent at this point, I've lost both of mine. Um you know, people are like, I take, you know, one moment to just be able to see them again, to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, I'm like, do I want to? Because, like, as a child, like, I wanted my best friend back. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But as an adult, I'm like, is if I got one last chance with you, would it be like, let me just spend this time? Because I got an answer question. Mm -hmm. And I need answers. Mm -hmm. Like, why didn't you protect me? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't your love for me enough to, like, leave this man alone mm -hmm. and not decide to continue to be with him? Mm -hmm. Was single parenthood so bad that you needed somebody, you needed help? Mm -hmm. And why was it this person? Like, why couldn't you leave the situation? This goes to what we talked about before we started filming. We're talking six years. Mm -hmm. So in that situation where we're like, well, how could that person be in it for 10 years and not do anything? How could this woman be in it for six years and mm -hmm. not doing any, do anything? And when child's being affected. Exactly. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and you've physically seen it. It's not just me telling you. Mm -hmm. Like, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, after she passed away and years on as an adult, like, me asking my brother, like, did he ever touch you? Mm -hmm. Like, just wondering if I was the only one who had experienced it. And he never really gave me a definitive answer because I think it goes back to, like, men being abused by males and not the stigma that comes with it. that. And yeah. I want to talk about it, not wanting to acknowledge that, like, they are a victim. And I don't think of myself as a victim. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I survived it. I think that you're a product of your environment. I've made it so where I am because of the things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, like, it's insane to me that, you know, when people are like, did they know? There's parents who know, and mm -hmm. they don't do a damn thing about it. Yeah. And you feel like, I'm, I'm asking, do you feel like as an adult, you're still working through it today, going? I am. So, you know, like I can say in, in my most previous relationship, like, I remember, like, being asleep and, like, him just, like, rubbing me. And mm -hmm. I would jump. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, why are you jumping? And it wasn't years into our relationship that I even, like, told him. Mm -hmm. Because, again, that's not a first date conversation. Hi, my name's Charmaine. I was assaulted when I was a child. Right. And I had my guard up. And so, you know, like, for years he'd be like, why do you jump? And, and I wasn't at a point where I wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So when I finally told him, like, he was angry, not at me. And he was angry at the fact that I hadn't told him before. Mm -hmm. But he was angry at the situation and the fact that nobody did anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I'm still working through it because, again, you get into new relationships. You want to get to know each other. You want to take things slow. But then there's things that are going to trigger you that you feel like, I need to be honest about these things so you don't do them. Right. So I don't feel triggered. But then where does this conversation lead? Mm -hmm. Do you see me as broken? Mm -hmm. Am I tarnished? Mm -hmm. You know, am I somebody worthy of... Love, love affection am i damaged yeah good and you know but then are you taking a step back because you're unsure of if you do something mm -hmm. how i'm gonna receive it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know like th that's one of the biggest things is like again my ex saying like we've been together all these years and you like the wall hasn't come down mm -hmm. i built this wall for you know, 25 years before mm -hmm. I met you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How quick do you think it'll come down? 